Hello, this is a piece of skin and let me orientate you. Over here is the skin surface which is covered by epidermis and then this is the dermis. So you can see straight away that there is an area here in the center where there is uh, there it is devoid of an epidermal covering and then the epidermis continues over here. Let's just first look at the normal epidermis. This is composed of stratified squamous epithelium and this is the basal layer the basal layer is where the stem cells are because this is a type of labile tissue or dividing tissues where the cells can divide and regenerate. And then just below the basal layer will be the basement membrane. This is the stratified squamous epithelium. And right on the surface, this layered material is keratin. So this is keratinizing stratified squamous epithelium. And this is epidermis. Below is the dermis. And you can sometimes see a few glands here. These are actually sweat glands. Now let's move on to this abnormal area. Over here, we can see that the epidermis sort of just disappears. And over in this part, there is no epidermal covering. This is the area of injury. And right at the other end, you can start to see epidermis again. So let's look at this abnormal area. You notice that there is a darker pink area on top. And this pink is due to fibrin. So all this kind of thick, strandy material is fibrin. This is because of hemostasis that occurs at the site of injury. And below this, uh, we can see that there are these elongated blood vessels. Here is an outline of a vessel. Here is another vessel, and you can see. And most of them are actually vertically oriented. They're sort of parallel to each other, and they're vertically oriented. Between the vessels, we can see these cells with uh, elongated nuclei and a sort of like tapering cytoplasm. These cells are fibroblasts and myofibroblasts. And in addition, we also see these smaller cells. These are chronic inflammatory cells. They would include lymphocytes and uh, perhaps also um, macrophages. So the combination of these newly formed vessels and fibroblasts is known as granulation tissue. This is one of the early steps in repair. You also notice that there's a lot of uh, space uh, in the connective tissue surrounding the vessel. So this is because of edema, because these newly formed vessels are very leaky. So the fluid from inside can leak onto the outside. So just to recap, granulation tissue is composed of newly formed vessels. They are often vertically uh, oriented parallel to each other with fibroblasts in between as well as myofibroblasts and also often accompanied by chronic inflammation. Following this, there will be deposition of collagen remodeling and maturation of the collagen to form a fibrous scar. And furthermore, on the surface, there will be regeneration of the epidermis because this is a label dividing tissue which can enter the cell cycle. So eventually, this wound over here will re-epithelialize, become covered again by epidermis. And over in this region, there will be a fibrous scar. So there will be some return of the tensile strength of the tissue, but it will not be as good as 100%.